So last night I posted a video about the new smart watt cycle batteries and their cycling issues. They will charge up to 100% and then disconnect themselves from the rest of the system. So first we have the smart battery and we have it connected in parallel with the Redodo 20 amp hour starting battery. So this can handle a lot of current in and out, but it has a small capacity, which is fantastic for this test. So first we're going to connect them together like we did and we're gonna charge them to 100%. And here's a battery charger, so let's charge it up. Now let's pull up the app, we're at 98% and it says it's charging. So soon we'll be at 100%. Also, this app is updated. The company and some of the viewers said, oh, you need to update the app. This has nothing to do with the app and everything to do with the BMS firmware and how it cycles and its voltage thresholds. So anyways, let's wait until it fully charges and I'll show you the rest. What confuses me is the only one people have complained about on the forum is the watt cycle smart battery. But after I posted my video, lots of people complained that their batteries are also doing that as well. From Lead Time, from Renogy, and even Redodo, all of the smart version batteries. So I guess they're all using the same BMS. Which is strange because the budget models and the older models all have different BMSs. Now that I think about it, none of the companies send me out the smart version. So I think they know that this issue actually exists. But what's strange is my viewers didn't post it on the forum. I think it's because they sold a ton of batteries and people started looking at the app and noticing this issue. And this is a real issue. This is not something to ignore. This is an actual problem and you shouldn't buy batteries that have this issue. Oh, we just dropped to zero amps. Yep, zero amps, awesome. But we're not at 100%, unfortunately. Let's wait until we hit 100. So the voltage is settling and we'll wait till it reconnects. Oh, 100%, perfect. We have zero amps going to the second battery in parallel, that's good. So both of the batteries are fully charged. Now let's turn off the battery charger. Now we have a DC electronic load and we're gonna connect it to both batteries at the same time. And we're gonna apply 20 amps and see what happens. Now it's set up, so let's start the test. And we are drawing 20 amps from both batteries. Now let's see what happens. And would you look at that? There's no current coming out of the smart battery. All right, this is the issue right here. It is not supplying any current to the load right now. Everything is powered by this tiny little battery that's in parallel. Now let's do it with this battery and see what happens. Because this battery, I've already done it three times and I posted my results on the forum. So let's try this test again with the larger battery. I haven't done that yet. So let's see what happens. Now this one can supply more current, but there's a different internal resistance value for the large one with the larger cell. So this might give us different results. It actually might make it worse because it can take more of the current. Now it's fully charged 100%. And let's add a load and zero amps. Look at that. And this is the issue right here. Right now, the small battery is powering 100% of the load and the large one is disconnected. Now let's try it with the cheapest battery I own and this one failed the capacity test. Let's just see what happens. This is for a future video. I probably shouldn't have showed it. It's just so silly how the marketing. This is a cheap Timu battery. They get a lot of views because they're total garbage. Actually, let's see what happened when I disconnected this battery. Maybe it woke this one up. Look at that, it turned on. So if there's not another battery connected and it's all by itself, it's just fine. I did a capacity test on this one and I got 330 amp hours and it cycled fine by itself. The problem is when you connect them in parallel and then they will take turns in cycling. Or if you had a large load, then it will wake it up. But with small current draw and parallel batteries, it, you have a huge imbalance issue. And I've been able to get the second battery down to 30%. And if you want proof of that, go on the forum and I have everything posted. So yeah, let's charge this up and see what happens. All right, we're at 100% so we can start this test. So remove the chargers. Now we're gonna add a load. Oh, the load was already on. Let's turn this off and charge it again. All right, so now let's test the load. Let's remove the chargers. Now we're gonna add a load. Zero amps, it is doing it again. So it really doesn't matter what battery you connect. The same issue is if you connect it in parallel with other smart batteries. And it doesn't matter which smart battery or which brand, they're all doing this. This is an issue across the board for these budget batteries. All right, let's verify it. So we have 20 amps at the load and we have 19.8 amps at the battery. 
There's nothing coming out of this battery right now. Now let's change this experiment so I can show you what it's supposed to do. And I wasn't wearing my safety glasses. It's very early in the morning. There's no excuse, but I messed up. Please wear your safety glasses if you ever touch a battery. This is my bad. Dang it. God, how do I forget that? I make so many videos telling people to do this good safety stuff and I freaking screw it up. And we're gonna connect two budget batteries in parallel and see what happens. Now they're connected in parallel. We have a diagonal configuration for the load tester and the sense leads. Oh, high voltage disconnect. Now I've added a load of 20 amps and these are the same capacity. So they should have about the same internal resistance and how I have them wired, they should both be pulling around 10 amps. So let's hook up our meter and find out. So for the first battery, we're pulling 10.4 amps. And for the second battery, we're pulling exactly 10 amps. And this is what you want to see if they're wired correctly. If they're not doing that, that means that you probably have current sharing issues or you're using one of these weird smart batteries. Again, it's not just watt cycle. A lot of people are saying the same issue exists with the Renogy, with the lead time and the Redodo smart batteries. So if you do have this issue, please post it on the forum. The only one I've seen on the forum is for watt cycle and no one else. It's very weird, but this is not normal behavior. You want all the batteries supplying the same amount of current for their size. Now, most of these companies still make good batteries, but they're not the smart version. I like the other batteries just fine and they work great. But if it says smart on the front of it, I'm not going to buy it. It seems like when they add these features, they're all using the same BMS. But for the ones before that, without those features, they all use different BMSs. And you can see all my testing and all my data in my past videos. So check those out if you're trying to find a good battery or check out my recommendation website. I always have it listed down below and I'll show you exactly what I'm recommending at the time. And that's pretty much it for this video. Very simple. If you have any issues with current sharing, I also have a tutorial on that and I'll have it linked down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.